Hello, Young or Old here, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about sort of essential items that I like to take touring with me. Stay tuned and watch the intro. Cappuccino and a latte. Now some of the stuff I have to take is purely down to the fact I need to take various camera items for vlogging with. So if you don't vlog you won't need them. So for the purpose of this video I won't be including them at all. The next thing to consider is how long you're going away for and are you taking a pillion? If I'm touring alone, I'd just chuck some clothes in the panniers and that's it. But if my wife is touring with me, then it's a whole new ball game. You know what I mean, guys. No doubt you've been there as well. Next, think about the accommodation you're going to be using and how long you will be staying at the said accommodation. Now let's just say we've booked a static caravan for a week. Now this is easy. As you're there for the week, you just get there, unload your panniers, hang up your clothes in the wardrobe and job done. Most caravans provide everything you need, including bedding, etc. But a lot of them do not provide towels. So you'll need some tea towels as well as bath towels. Now as you're connected to the mains electric in the caravan, there's no problem with charging phones or whatever else you might need. We like to pack some tea, coffee and some form of milk, so at least when we get there, we can relax, have a brew before unpacking. Once we have unpacked, it's off to the supermarket with empty panniers to get some provisions. Bacon brie and cranberry. And an ice cream day. If you're staying at a hotel or a B&B, this means you don't have to take towels with you as they are provided. You still have the advantage of a wardrobe to hang your clothes in and of course mains electric. Now this is fine if you're staying there as a base for your trip and touring daily. But what if you're staying somewhere different each night? In this case, we don't bother unpacking the panniers, we just take them off the bike and up to our room. Now we can just get a shower or put on some casual clothes and go out for somewhere for a meal. We always take a couple of bin liners as they make good dirty clothes bags. My wife would kill me if I shoved a pair of used boxer shorts and socks back into the pannier next to her nice new t-shirts, which she's purchased just for the trip. A question. Why do women have to buy new clothes just for a few days trip on the bike when there's a wardrobe full of them back home? Surely, can't just be my wife that does this. Now, my wife don't do camping, refuses to even give it a go. And I have to admit, it's been many years since I went. But this is a whole new board game, as you've got to pack all the gear you're going to need. If you're touring abroad, it's mostly the same here, but just pay attention to how you pack things. Now we take a plastic wallet with all the documents we will need, including ferry or tunnel crossing tickets, passports. Now this is vital stuff that you just can't afford to lose, else it could ruin your trip. So we keep ours locked in the top box, as we know that we'll have to leave the bike on the journey when we're stopping at services. At the last stop before our method of crossing, we take the wallet out of the top box and zip it safely in the tank back. Now, this way, when we need to show our tickets or passports, they are to hand, rather than the wife having to dismount the bike, then me, unlock the top box, show what you need to do, and then reverse the whole process, while you're listening to all the tutting done by the queue of vehicles behind you. 
Now when I first got the GTR, it took a while to get used to the keyless ignition. I'm still not sure why we need them. So twice I left my ignition on and both times ended up with a flat battery. One time I managed to get bush, you know, push start and second time even two uh, police officers. They couldn't even push me going. Turned out it was actually a bit of a dodgy battery. Um, anyway, in case it ever happens again, I purchased this. Only from Alfred's, about 60 quid. And basically it's just a portable jump starter. Works a treat apparently uh, not only that you can actually use it as a power pack to charge your phone up with uh, as well so a good bit of kit and i said just put it in the top box and take it with me a few months ago i noticed my front tire pressure light come on i was about halfway between home and the petrol station so it was only about a five minute each way but i decided to proceed towards the station when I got there, I noticed there was nowhere to put, you know, the usual 50p in to use a pump. I then noticed the cost of living crisis, as it air pumps as well, because it's now a pound. There's still nowhere to put the coin. Ah, it's now done by debit card. So out comes my wallet, took out my card, still no use, as the machine only does contactless, and my card isn't one. The cashier had kindly offered to use his card, so I gave him a pound coin and needed the rest so I could use the machine. Shock horror, there was no way their hose would fit onto my valve because of the brake disc, no matter what end I chose. So basically I just had to go back home and use my own pump. So I purchased this little toy. Basically it's a USB chargeable uh, tire inflator. The actual hose does unscrew there's a light on it um i actually tried it and it did pump up a car tire from completely flat on one charge so to put a few psi into a bike tire isn't really going to be a problem it's you know it's about as noisy as the bike that's about the only down side of it but it will do the job and here again it also acts as a power pack to charge up your camera or your phone or whatever else due to my remarkable skills of getting lost um, I try to go prepared now and basically just use this and it does help I normally use a small tank bag so I can keep things sort of ready to hand such as a small bottle of Pepsi Max or water because if we pull up into a lay bar just for a quick stop at least I can have a quick slurp a packet of wet wipes is good especially on a hot day because you can wipe your face and have a quick freshen up I know some who actually keep their wallet in the tank bag but I keep mine in a zip waterproof jacket pocket there's no in me, I just leave it in the tank bag when I went off to the loo. I never tend to leave any valuable items in the tank bag, just in case. In my wallet I have a driver's license, an AA card, a debit card and some cash. There's many unmanned petrol stations now, so a cash payment is a no-no, you will need your debit card. Likewise, a local Chinese takeaway near where I live, they only take cash, so a bit of everything solves the problem. It goes without saying, obviously, if you take any prescription medication, make sure you take that away with you. Uh, luckily, I am not. But if I did, I would make sure that was locked up in the top box here again. It's something you can't just replace. I would take things like painkillers with me. Um, nothing worse if you've got a headache or a toothache or anything like that and I'd just keep that in my tank bag you know because if it ever did get stolen it's easy to replace 
later. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you do, please do the tips to like and subscribe. And basically, happy touring. So, take care, ride safe, and bye for now.